Um, what we wanted to do today was give you an overview of the event, what we wanted uh, to achieve with it and how it's going to run. Mention a few of the elements of how to approach reviewing preprints and give you an overview of the platforms that are available uh, for preprint commenting uh, and reviewing. So I'm very happy to say that we have four great speakers with us today. Uh, Daniela Saderi from Pre-Review, Mate, Mate Palfi from Pre-Lights, Mario Mercier from Peer Community Inn, and Boris Barbo from uh, PubPeer. Um, we are going to be giving a number of presentations here on the stage uh, section of the platform. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that there should be a session opening uh, probably around now, where Victoria Yan, who is our peer review registry coordinator, will be available. If you have any questions, uh, she'll be avail available live, so you can speak to her directly with any questions, or if you would like to familiarize yourself with the platform a little bit more. Um, so, in terms of the uh, uh, peer review uh, challenge, why why are we having this event at all so we we thought it was important to give uh, uh visibility uh to this activity around reviewing preprints we feel that it provides a lot of benefits for authors uh but also for any readers who come to the preprints it does help them contextualize the research and understand that define this better so we wanted to support this activity as part of um uh as part, as part of the peer review week um, and what we wanted to do is have a group effort uh, around the uh, preprint commenting and reviews in a format that would allow collaborative work and also flexibility in, uh, in terms of the uh, commenting and reviewing options, what is the format that you would like to use for that, uh, and also make sure that we provide as many uh, reviews publicly as possible to give visibility to this activity. So we are very happy to have this uh, preprint uh, reviewing platforms uh, partnering with us. We are also very happy to have other platforms uh, and journals involved. Uh, Pre Review Commons, which is a platform for uh, journal agnostic review, as well as Proceedings of the Royal Society B, Embo Press, and PLOS, uh, who are also participating. In terms of how things will run on the actual date, a few details on the format. Uh, the main thing is that we want to run this um, uh, roughly as a group of, um, if you want to think about it as a group of a, a small uh, journal clubs going in parallel. So we will be trying to develop groups of uh, participants, uh, uh, participants working on individual preprints. Um, with also the option of having individuals working uh, by themselves if they want or interacting with others on individuals uh, on the individual papers. Um, what we are going to do is as much as possible, uh, try to create groups that can work together on a preprint based on the expertise information that you provided when you register. So thank you for providing that. Um, and we will assign a facilitator per group. Several of the platforms are involved and we are gr grateful for their uh, contribution there. Uh, and then the facilitator will work with the group to help them develop the reviews. We are going to be using uh, GDocs to help the collection of the comments uh, so that we have again some visibility on the activity and we can also sell that at the end. At the main event, we are gonna have a, a couple of presentations with editorial tips on review and preprints. And we will also be opening a couple of options for interaction with uh, the other attendees, uh, uh, which I will be explaining briefly in terms of the features at the platform. So I wanted to go over several of the features that we have available in this platform at the moment. Um, uh, thank you for being here and again for trying this with us. It's the first time that we use it. Um, there is this place where we are now, the section where we are now is the stage, which is where the presentations will take place. And this is where we invite everyone to join when they, they will come to the event on the 20 seconds. Um, the actual review for preprints and the commenting on preprints will happen at the sessions area, um, which you should see on the toolbar on the left hand side. Again, it's also available now today as we have the session with Victoria that has opened. What we uh, ask you to do is as you join the event on the 22nd, 
uh, first go to the stage and then there will be a, a session for your preprint that will open around five minutes after the start. And again, we will be happy in having uh, a session per preprint uh, for any preprint that has a dedicated group. And then we will also have a session for any, any preprints where perhaps we could not create a group, but we would like to uh, welcome uh, comments from other participants. Um, or oh, actually, you could also join that session if you don't have a preprint on the, you don't see a preprint on the list that you would like to work on, but you would like to pick another and work with those uh, in the session. Something else to mention is that we would like to have uh, some time to share the experience uh, with the band at the last uh, 15 minutes. So we will have what we are calling a roundtable session at the end, which will be open to everybody, and you can come there and, and, and tell us how it went for you. And where we will be reviewing essentially how many how many comments and reviews we did on the day. A couple of other areas that we will available on the 22nd are the networking area, which we will open towards the end. And this will allow optional uh, short chats between um, uh, attendees. Uh, again, networking chats, that's optional, but we are hoping that it will be a fun way of interacting with others on the day. And then on the expo area, we will be adding some informational videos so that you have, um, so that you have uh, the resources available. Uh, again, information about the preprint platforms and the recording for today. We are going to be working on a number of preprints and the way that we have developed the list uh, so far. And I'm, I want to say that this is uh, quite uh, flexible and we keep adding to the list as we receive recommendations. But the way we have worked on this so far was to uh, uh, develop it based on the recommendations from those who register for the band uh, and recommendations from our uh, partner platform. So I wanted to give you a flavor of some of the uh, preprints that we will work on and that have dedicate, we will have dedicated groups and facilitators with each of the platforms or uh, partnering journals. The list that we will have available will be longer than this. So I will be emailing all of you who have registered with information on the preprints that uh, we will cover uh, or that are available for you to work on and the groups that we have developed and, and which group you will be in. Uh, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, talking a little bit about how to approach the review of uh, preprints and many of you are probably familiar with this because I know you have been involved um, in other activities. Uh, but one thing that we would like to ask you is to, again, I will communicate the, the preprints uh, available and the groups, but that you can uh, prepare having read the paper. This is useful to, to get ready for it uh, in advance. And then that as, you, as you read it, it can be helpful also to annotate some some comments or questions that you may have about the paper for yourself uh, that can sort of fit the conversation, the conversation on the day. Uh, an important element of writing these reviews is to be as constructive as possible. We want the comments to be polite and helpful for the authors. Uh, important to focus on the scientific content, so focus on the science, uh, no comments about the authors. Uh, we would like this to be a, a review of the research itself. Um, and in any situations where you may have any concerns about the work, it can be very helpful for the authors to provide suggestions um, uh, on how to address the issues uh, so that the, that can be helpful for the authors as they consider the comments. Uh, in terms of writing the review, something that we wanted to mention is that it can be very helpful to have a structure to this. So we have some recommendations for this, but probably on the day it would be useful to spend a few minutes with the group discussing what the structure may work for you. Um, we have also developed a participant guide, which we are going to be sharing with everyone. So if you haven't received it yet, I'll be in touch. And there will be further details on all of this, as well as the format, et cetera, there. So I suggest that you probably, you, you may want to have a, a check there for some more guidance on the writing on the review. Um, but as a few uh, main comments for the structure, it can be useful to start with an overview of the paper. Uh, again, yes, it can be brief, a summary of a paragraph or two, what the paper covers and where does it fit in, in the field of research. Um, it can be useful as well to highlight what you like. We all, we all like uh, positive feedback. 
So you can add a few notes as to what you find interesting or new. Was there anything about the methodology, about the as angle that the authors uh, took, a new mechanism that they are describing? And then in terms of any questions, uh, when you turn to the questions on, or any concerns you may have about the study, um, it can be useful to categorize them uh, as either major or minor. Um, the major would be any aspects that affect the, the standing of the paper. Do you have any issues with the, do you see any issues with the rigor of the methodology? Uh, whether the conclusions are supported. The minor items will be things that can strengthen the paper and help the authors polish it, but that do not affect the validity of the study as a whole. Uh, as we mentioned, we want to have some flexibility on uh, the format of the reviews and comments. So you may want to participate and actually don't complete the full review uh, and rather just focus on certain aspects of the paper, uh, write a shorter, perhaps less structured uh, comment. It can still be useful to follow a few pointers uh, similar to the general review. So in terms of writing at least a sentence as to what the take home message of the study is, um, indicate which part you are commenting on. Is this about the methodology, a particular figure? Perhaps you are looking at the reproducibility of the study and whether the data are available. Uh, again, make, make a mention as to whether your, the issue that you, you have is either major, major or minor. And if, you, if possible, make recommendations for the authors on how they can improve. Uh, a few other items that I just wanted to mention is that we are going to be uh, having a format where groups uh, address the reviews collaboratively. Uh, so a few pointers for the day. Um, again, read the paper prior, and if you have any notes, uh, please add those to the GDoc. It can be very useful to have those as a reminder for yourself, uh, but also for others who will join the conversation. Uh, there will be, uh, again, for the groups, a facilitator, but it can be useful at the beginning to just obviously introduce yourself to others, but also spend a few minutes agreeing the type of reviews and the structure that you will follow so that everyone is aligned as to how you will handle the, the work on the day. Uh, designate a note taker, which uh, can be really useful so that this person can just uh, take notes and develop the review as the discussion flows. And don't be afraid if there are different opinions raised on the day. I think that's uh, common when looking at uh, research papers and it's totally fine. The important will be, I think, that you have a discussion about the different opinions. And if you would like to reflect that in the comments, um, that should work perfectly fine. So with this, I wanted to now hand over to uh, the presentations by the uh, different platforms. Uh, I wanted to mention before we move on to that uh, part, that as I mentioned earlier, there is a session open. Um, so if you would like to ask a question, but speak to someone, Victoria will be there. Uh, if you have questions for uh, any of us uh, on, on the stage, feel free to, to use the chat to, to note any comments or questions, and we will be coming back to those towards the end. So with this, I'm going to uh, now um, remove my slides and my camera so I can hand over to Daniela Saderi from uh, pre-review. I can. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to look at the slides in another uh, window. Okay, hello, everyone. Thank you, and apologies for um, uh, these uh, technical difficulties. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll get used to the platform today. So thank you for hosting this orientation. Um, I just want to take a, a few minutes to introduce uh, pre-review. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, heard of us, uh, we are um, an, an open, how we say, open project that I run uh, through a nonprofit uh, through Fisca sponsorship. And we, our um, goal uh, is to um, bring more uh, equity and diversity to a scholarly peer review. We really uh, believe that um, any researcher should have uh, the training uh, and the uh, opportunity to engage in, uh, in peer review. And so, um, the, um, and, and we are particularly uh, um, passionate about uh, seeing um, uh, a diverse population of researchers uh, from different backgrounds, different geographical locations and career level to come together to uh, review manuscript. Um, and this is like our vision is to see um, a seamless um, a review process between reviewer preference and um, a journal engaged peer review process that is much more um, uh, global. 
Um, to do that, uh, we uh, focus on three different aspects. We call we call them the, the pillars of, of free review. So I have no idea if the slides are going forward, by the way. <laughs> so I am on slide three right now. Um, oh, so the thank you. I'm sorry. This was um, the slide that I was, I was talking about, our mission. So if you can go to the next slide, I'm just going to try to back and forth. Thank you. Uh, so the, the way how we uh, try to fulfill our um, uh, mission uh, is uh, through uh, three different um, uh, programs and uh, processes. And the first one is the, the developing uh, platforms that are um, whose features and uh, applications are really designed around uh, the needs of uh, early career researchers as primary users. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, one of the platforms that we have uh, been using a lot this year uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, and uh, and hopefully also the platform we're going to be using for this uh, event. Uh, but also we focus on community building. Um, and uh, we're very excited about starting our first pilot of a peer review mentoring program this fall. Um, and the focus of the program, it's like um, uh, we're going to pair uh, edit journal editors with um, early career researchers who have very little experience in peer review and going through a 14 weeks um, a, a program that uh, has uh, allows for interactions, one-to-one -one interaction, mentor and mentee, but also very importantly, cohort peer-to-peer uh, -peer, -peer, uh, mentorship. Um, so that um, hopefully next year there is going to be uh, more, much more available spots for that. Right now we're limiting to ten people, um, and also the live preprint journal clubs that are. We're very excited to see that uh, some of these uh, principles that we have been applying to journal clubs are actually also uh, taken up from uh, for events such as this one. So thank you for that. We're basically just getting together and reviewing uh, preprints uh, similarly to what we're going to be doing next week. Um, very briefly, uh, I uh, the platform that we're going to be using uh, for uh, the preprint that we're facilitating because it's a COVID-19 uh, uh, um, uh, themed preprint. So if you can go to the next slide, sorry, I think that um, it's stuck on the three. Yes, thank you. So this is the screenshot of the platform called Outbreak Science Rapid Peer Review that we um, designed last year and launched in January. And very uh, serendipitously, then we had a big uh, pandemic. So the the goal of this this is a specific peer review community of Outbreak scientists uh, who we invite to um, uh, review uh, rapidly review um, uh, preprints that are related to outbreaks. So on the um, I'm not gonna like spend too much time uh, saying like uh, you know how to log in and all of that, but uh, the important thing is that anyone with an, any researcher with an ORCID ID can log in. Um, and then if you go, sorry, if you move to the next slide, um, thank you. Oops, one less. <laughs> sorry. Um, one more slide. Thank you. Yeah, and so the the only requirement is that uh, you read and abide by our uh, code of conduct. And so if you if you sign up, so you can go to the next slide. You can uh, both review anonymously or with your uh, public um, ORCID ID and profile and name. Uh, but one important thing is that we are always gonna um, be able to um, uh, track uh, who. Who you are. So, if there is a violation of the code of conduct, we can um, uh, not disclose obviously your data, but we can um, enforce um, uh, our code of conduct in that way. So, even if you uh, review anonymously, so we are really um, focused on creating a community that is uh, safe and um, where comments and feedbacks are respectful and constructive, similarly to what Irasha was referring to before. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit difficult because I'm going back and forth from one side. So if you can move forward um, one more slide. Um, uh, here I had a few a series of slides that we can move uh, through quickly that kind of show how to um, uh, uh, review a preprint on the on the website. We do not host preprints. We're not a preprint server. So the way that this works is that you have to copy and paste the DOI of the preprint you want to review, uh, and then that will fetch the metadata from Google Scholar and import it into the website. So if you can, sorry, uh, move forward uh, one more time. Um, 
Great. So this is just showing um, you all the steps. And then at the end of this series of screenshots, I actually have a link uh, that I hopefully we can share with everybody. Um, uh, there is a video uh, to show how to interact with the, pro the, the platform. And whoever is going to uh, do the preprint that we're going to facilitate, uh, obviously, is going to be guided even more in how to um, engage. Um, you can move, um, sorry, Iracha, to the um, slide. It's like 21 on the deck, so where I can briefly show what the rapid review is about. OK, so the particular uh, thing about this this platform is that um, users, uh, reviewers can uh, rapidly review the preprint. So there are a series of editorial yes or no questions and some optional open ended questions at the end. So the, the point is that um, then we can see aggregated data uh, from all the responses um, of the reviewer. So if you can move forward one more time, um, it, there is a visualization in which um, a, a reader can see the preprint on one side and the other side kind of a, an overview of what um, the different reviewers have um, um, responded to those questions. Um, and then one more. Sorry. Um, yeah, so here is a video. I don't know if this slide deck is shared across all the participants, but if not, um, Irasha, let me know how I can share this link. Uh, it's just a, a short video that shows how to uh, engage with the platform. And then uh, just uh, to end, uh, we are really um, excited to be here and to have this opportunity. And I just want to thank you. Uh, thank you and thank everybody who um, works with us. Sorry if this was not as polished. It was hard to coordinate. But um, hopefully the day of, of, the, of the event will be more prepared. <laughs> At least I can speak for myself. Thank you. Thank you, no, th thank you so much, Daniela. I, I... The same from me. This is a useful, a useful uh, practice for the day. And thank you, everyone, for your patience. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, after this, uh, we are going to be moving to a presentation on uh, pre lies by Mate Palfi. Uh, so Mate, can, yeah, can you can hear I, me? Yes. And I'm, can I I'm fine with you moving my slides. Perfect. OK, so I'll go off camera. Okay, nice thanks everyone for, for joining and thanks Iracha for inviting us and um, for hosting this great event and to ASAP Bio as well, of course. So I want to give a brief intro to Prelights, um, which is a um, project that launched a bit over two years ago by the company of biologists. Um, so just a few words about the company of biologists. If um, Iracha, you could move to the next slide. It might take a few moments. In the meantime, yeah. So the company of biologists is a not-for-profit publishing organization, and we have five journals. And what I just want to point out is all these journals encourage preprinting. And from very early on, we've had uh, preprint-friendly policies. Um, we have um, two-way integration with BioArchive. And also four of these journals uh, have joined um, Review Commons. But apart from these five journals, uh, the company also runs community sites. Um, we have three of them. The oldest one is the Node, which is a site for developmental biologists, and it just celebrated its 10th anniversary this year. Um, the newest one is Focal Plane, a community site for um, microscopy, which launched this summer. And um, Prelights, which, as I mentioned, launched two and a half years ago, um, is a community platform for preprint highlights. So let me just briefly give you an overview of this. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Iracha. So at the very heart of prelites are early career researchers who we call the prelighters. So they are PhD students, postdocs, and some of them um, early career PIs. And they come from all over the world and um, from all different research fields. And they select preprints that they find are interesting to the community and write them um, short digest about these. But what we find really important is that they engage the preprint authors and start a discussion. Because one of the main aims of prelites is to um, facilitate discussion about preprints and also to help other researchers navigate the, the preprint literature. And we're also happy if other research, um, researchers in the community can um, comment on these prelights. So if you can go to the next, I will just show you um, how a prelight looks like. So it has all the information about the preprint, so the, the link to the preprint, um, the DOI. Actually, all the prelights also have their own DOI, um, which we introduced um, earlier this year. Um, it has uh, the profile of the prelighter, if you can click on the profile. Um, and also, um, all prelights come with a short, engaging um, summary, which gets also tweeted out. So we have also a, a relatively big following on Twitter. Um, the prelight will contain a, a short um, background about the work and also then um, a summary of the main findings. 
But I think one of the most important parts, if um, you're actually going to go to the next part, is that um, these prelites contain a personal opinion by the preliter on why this work was interesting and why it's important. Um, also very much how um, Iracha um, is asking you to, during this event to comment on why you think this work is interesting. So we also really focus on um, constructive feedback and the same goes for the questions. So the preliters um, um, ask um, really nice and um, detailed but uh, constructive questions about the work. And um, the, we've be happy to see that over 60% of the prelites get an author response, which is also posted at the end of the prelite. And in summer, our care stage, we also get other comments um, from people outside. Um, and what we've also been nice to see is that some authors have told us that they've actually revised their work based on the um, discussion and the comments they've gotten from preliters. Um, I just want to mention that apart from um, getting DOIs, prelites are also indexed by various um, platforms. So they're also on by archive, they're indexed by EuroPMC and also by Papier, which we're gonna um, we're gonna hear about Papier later today. You can go to the next slide, Iracha. So I think we've started doing a bit more recently. As um, um, so, I didn't mention that once the work is published uh, the, on the prelice, you also get a link to the publication. So there's automatic linking um, to the journal article, and we've been encouraging preliters to go back to the preprint authors and ask them what were the most important improvements in their manuscript, which were a consequence of peer review. And we think we want to um, also contribute to opening the black box of peer review. And this can be really um, useful information to the reader, even if there's a peer review report available. So if it's transparent, um, the reader might not want to read um, eight or 10 pages, but what I just want to know what were the main things that changed in the paper. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so and, and another um, pr um, project we launched last year on prelists is called Prelist, which is a curation of preprint lists. And um, this comes in two flavors. So either people can create topic specific uh, list of preprints, or um, they can create lists um, of preprints that were presented at conferences. And now that most of the conferences have moved to a virtual format, we also do prelist on virtual conferences. And I think I have only one slide left, if you can go there, Iracha. So I just wanted to encourage um, people who are interested um, of joining. So we do one call per year for new people to join, but also it's possible to join throughout the year um, just by emailing us and sending a, a sample pre-light and, and some information about ourselves. And I, I just want to say again that it's really fun to work this with this a community of over 250 um, early career researchers. They're also involved in also many as other aspects of um, promoting preprints, not just writing pre-lights. Many of them I also seen on this call. And um, also they're also gonna participate at this event and facilitate some preprint discussions. So thanks a lot. Um, and I think we can go to the next presentation. Thank you so much, Mate. Um, that was a very nice summary of uh, pre-lights. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, so I think the next one up is uh, Maria Marcia from uh, PR Community Inn. Um, Maria, do you want Hi. to? Can you hear me? So I give you the micro. Uh, you, uh, I think you're yeah. muted. Let me see. Can I? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so the, one of my slides, or maybe a couple, you might have to load it all at once because I've got lots of things appearing. So sure. I'll, I'll keep clicking. I'll Thank be telling you. you to click. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So hi, I'm I'm Marion, and I'm um, one of the founding members of. Peer Community in Circuit Neuroscience, which is one branch of uh, Peer Community in or PCI. Um, and I'm just going to give a really quick overview of um, what PCI does, which um, in a nutshell is to facilitate um, free and transparent uh, peer review of preprints and also recommendations of preprints. Um, oh, so hang on. Yes, yeah, so if you can click, please. So um, PCI is a, a non-profit um, scientific, scientific organization, and it basically um, brings together communities of specialists um, in particular fields. So communities of researchers, um, which we call recommenders. Um, and so essentially their role is very similar to journal editors. So where, uh, where journal editors arrange uh, for peer review to, to happen for a paper and then make an editorial decision, um, we have communities of researchers that act like editors um, that we call recommenders um, that will uh, do the same thing. So they'll basically bring together um, reviewers to review a particular preprint um, and then 
um, with communication with, with the author, and there might be a few rounds of review, um, and, and then that preprint might be recommended if it reaches the, the desired kind of um, standard. Um, and if it gets recommended, essentially the, the recommender writes um, a short piece, um, essentially explaining why uh, that preprint um, is interesting um, and why they've chosen to recommend it. And that, that gets published uh, with a DOI on our website, along with all of the reviews. And um, so we currently have 11 communities set up in uh, already quite a broad range of different fields. So I, as I said, I'm from um, circuit neuroscience, but there's, uh, well, you can see all the different uh, fields that we cover there. Um, and I think we've got another two that are in the pipeline. Um, and yeah, we're always looking to grow and, and cover more areas um, um, and essentially have options for uh, all the fields uh, if anyone would want their preprint to be uh, reviewed in, in this way. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so actually, this one I'm going to go over really quickly because I don't think I really need to convince anyone here of the benefits of preprints. Um, obviously, one of the main ones is the fact that we skip this whole long stage um, that we have with journals where we go to the editor and to reviewers and back and forth. And it can take a really long time before the science actually reaches the community. So with, with preprints, it's immediate. The science reaches the community. And what we're trying to do is to do the other bit after. So all the reviewing and, um, and the kind of validation after so that the, the science uh, dissemination is, is immediate. And obviously, um, one of the main advantages of preprints is the fact that they're free. So they're free to share, free for us to upload, but also free to read, um, which is two big differences to journals where um, we have to pay to, to publish our work and we also have to pay to read it. Um, this means that with preprints, we've got much greater visibility um, and also um, the servers are also platforms where we can get feedback uh, on our work. Uh, on our preprints. So next slide, please. Um, however, there's a number of, uh, of things that can be um, optimized or improved to make the most of preprint servers. Um, and one of the issues currently is that there aren't enough, uh, there isn't enough feedback. So authors aren't really getting as much feedback as maybe they'd like uh, on the service. So the graph on the right um, shows that uh, it's data from BioArchive uh, showing that um, with the number of preprints uh, increasing exponentially, the actual percentage of those preprints receiving comments is, is dropping to well below 5%. Um, and there's also no quality control. Um, so anything can be uploaded, which is one of the, one of the strengths of preprints, the fact that it's free for all. Um, but it also means that there's uh, no validation for the authors and, and nothing, no kind of stamp uh, I mean, obviously, peer review is, is not um, perfect, but there is no kind of stamp of approval to say that the science is sound. So um, you might want to click lots of times here, actually, but essentially how PCI works is um, that uh, you have a preprint and you decide that you want to get, uh, to get it peer reviewed. So you can submit it to the PCI in, in your field. Um, a recommender will pick it up and will send it out for peer review and there'll be potentially some rounds of peer review like there would be for a journal. Um, and at the end, it, if it reaches the, the, the standards, then it will get a, a recommendation and a written kind of news and views uh, piece by the, the recommender who will be an expert in that field. And of course, uh, submitting to journals is, is also optional. You, you can still submit that preprint to a journal. We, we only publish the, the recommendation and, and um, the reviews, but the preprint is still a, a preprint. So it can go on to be published in a journal if the authors uh, choose to. So in that sense, we aim to, to provide a kind of validation of preprints um, and give the authors uh, feedback. And also as has been mentioned previously by um, by others in the talks, uh, we think it's really important that everything should be transparent. So we publish um, the not only the recommendation piece, but also all of the reviews. Um, next. Yeah, so just really quickly, um, we're going to be hosting, I think, two uh, kind of live journal club sessions uh, of two preprints that are currently under review at PCI. So one in uh, circuit neuroscience and the other in evolutionary biology. 
Um, and they'll both have a, a facilitator from PCI. Uh, if you can click next. And um, so the facilitator will essentially um, give a, a brief overview of, of the, the preprint um, and will chair the discussion, but the rest will be up to you. So um, one thing to bear in mind is that because these, uh, these preprints are actually under review at PCI at the moment, um, the discussion, it will be at the discretion of the recommender who's, who's um, in charge of that preprint, but the, the comments that that are made during the session may well end up being used um, as as um, as part of the review process. Or if uh, if someone contributes uh, a lot and so the recommender thinks they might be uh, worth uh, recruiting as a as a reviewer, then they might be contacted. Obviously, it's all optional. Um, and another thing that's important to know is that uh, if if you do, you were to be involved um, in the review process, you, you can be anonymous if you choose to. So that's everything for uh, the sessions. Um, we just ask that if you plan on attending, please try to read the preprint in advance and um, come prepared to comment. And thank you um, uh, for organizing. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> thank you so much, Marian, um, for a very nice overview. Um, oh, I think I'm, I'm getting some feedback, so I'll mute all our microphones. Yeah. Um, right. So. We have up next um, a presentation by Boris Barber from PubPeer. So Boris, shall I hand over to you and I'm happy to, again, uh, move the slides for you, if that works. The slides, I can see my first one. Well, uh, hello everybody and thank you for inviting me. So I'm Boris Barber. I'm a neuroscientist working in Paris, but I also, in my spare time, uh, work for PubPeer. And uh, it's important to say that that work is quite independent of my employers and hosts who don't always agree with everything that I say or do with the platform. So PubPeer is actually now uh, eight years old, roughly. And uh, in some ways, it's a lower level and broader platform than some of the uh, initiatives that have been presented. So if you could already go to the next slide, please, Irachi. Uh, basically, it's a database and a website that uh, can expose a page for pretty much any publication that is out there. So anything with a DOI or uh, a preprint ID, so in particular archive uh, didn't or don't have DOIs still, and uh, anybody can comment, make a review about that paper. So there's a text box, you enter your comment, and it will be submitted to uh, PubPeer, and with a delay maybe for moderation, will, uh, if accepted, be made available to everybody worldwide permanently. So that's the basic idea, is it's uh, any useful discussion linked to uh, any publication. So if you go to the next slide, uh, one of the uh, strengths, particularities, and also um, controversial points of the site is that we do allow anonymous comments, so completely anonymous comments, to protect the commenters. So we don't know who they are, and uh, it's it should be difficult for anybody else to find out who they are, even if there's a uh, hack of the site or uh, a court case. So uh, by accepting anonymous comments, we have to be very careful about the type of comments that are accepted. So the moderation is not performed on the person, but performed on the content of the comment. And so there are layered safeguards uh, on comment content, but in particular, the comments must be factual, scientific, supported, and publicly verifiable or falsifiable. They can be wrong, but a reader must be able to decide for themselves on the information provided whether it is true or false. Authors have an immediate permanent right of reply. Uh, in general, we try very hard to ensure they receive an email alert as soon as they're a comment. They're encouraged to reply, and they can reply in the same place with the same prominence. And so their comments will also always be read alongside any of the comments. So unlike most of the initiatives uh, presented so far, some of the comments, if not most of the comments, actually are 
at least somewhat critical on the site. They don't have to be, um, but uh, in a way, it's it, it's a place where uh, it's quite hard to be critical in other places often. So we do collect uh, some of uh, quite trenchant criticism sometimes. Uh, nevertheless, it's a, it's a general platform. We are keen to centralize any useful commentary about any publication. So we do try to link out or even mirror, if possible, uh, um, content from Prelights, uh, PCI. Uh, so we're on the lookout always for, we uh, link to quite a number of blogs. Uh, there's Twitter interaction is now underway. Um, if I can go to the next slide, or if you could go to the next slide, please, Irachi. Um, so, uh, so although anybody can say uh, not anything, but can leave a comment about any publication, including preprints. It's by design, preprint compatible, preprint friendly. Um, you don't necessarily see that information on the journal websites, particularly if it's criticism. They're generally very careful about uh, avoiding criticism of their output. So we have developed a number of, or well, a couple of um, extensions, so browser add-ons, that will alert you if uh, a recognized DOI is in the page, if it's been commented and send you back to PubPeer. And if you, so that works on PubMed, on Google Scholar now, on journal websites, on author CVs, whenever the DOI or a link back to the paper, some URLs will be detected as well. If you go to the next slide, please, Irachi. Uh, we have also produced a Zotero extension uh, yes, there is an image. So if you use Zotero as your reference manager um, and you install the extension, extension, then whenever a paper has received commentary on PubPeer, there'll be a little link and there's a tab giving you some information and links back to, to that discussion. Uh, so on the next slide, we have a sister website uh, which uh, where content does end up getting uh, mirrored on PubPeer, but it's intended as a flexible platform for overlay journals of pretty much any site. So you could imagine running pre-lights or, or peer community in or things like that, or, or more formal overlay journals, but also just a personal reading list if you want to. And the aim is to showcase your expertise. So we often agree that journals aren't doing a good job and the periodical is your chance to uh, do better, basically. So typically, uh, everybody will have their niche subject and they can select any existing publication and say why they think it's important, bad, good, um, and produce a, a review of that. And uh, that will be your periodical. So if you go to the next slide, uh, that pretty much says, uh, what I just said, which was that it's intended as a very flexible platform. If you are thinking about setting up anything like a reviewing service, uh, we'd be happy to link or mirror your content. That will it will gain some extra exposure through the extensions that we provide, and we'd also be interested in discussing um, uh, whether a periodical beat could be adapted to uh, support your platform. Uh, so that's really all I want to say at the moment. So I won't be involved or we won't be involved very directly in the reviewing of the preprints, but the platform is absolutely available should anybody wish to, pre to um, post the review produced uh, on the platform or if it's produced elsewhere, you're quite welcome to link to it as well. And these are the addresses of our two sites and I'll stop there. I'm sorry if I took too long. Thank you so much, Boris, and thank you all of the presenters uh, for a very nice overview of each of the platforms um, and for working with me on these slides. Um, I just wanted to pause there. I realize we're over our time, um, but I just wanted to see if there was anything in the chat in the form of any questions. Um, I cannot see anything at this time. Um, okay. Uh, let, let me just double check. Uh, any other? I see that Victoria has been addressing uh, most of the questions there. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just double check if there is anything that has not been covered. Um, 
I'll address a couple of the items there, and then in the interest of time, I'll be wrapping up as I realize that we've gone over time. Uh, there were a couple of questions as to how things will run for the groups. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be opening the sessions five minutes after the start of the event, and the event will run for uh, 90 minutes. So you have up to uh, an hour 25 if you want to use all of the time to work on the review. Um, there will be other things that we will open towards the end for the last 15 minutes, but it's up to the groups to continue working on the sessions uh, for the actual preprint. They will remain open. Um, uh, there were some questions uh, about the facilitators, which I see Victoria has addressed. But essentially, we will provide it, we will be providing some uh, uh, documentation for facilitators. But we ask everyone to read the preprints prior, and we will give information for to all of you as to again if you are in a group, which group you are in, and the same for the facilitators that everyone has the information ahead of time. The expectation would be obviously that the facilitator has also looked at the paper prior so that they are ready at least to uh, help the group work through the reviews. Um, we will, I will be following up uh, on, on the, uh, again, on the details for the list of preprints and the groups, etc. cetera. Uh, but with this, I think we can uh, wrap up uh, here. Um, I just wanted to thank you all again for being part of this. It's a new format and also a new platform uh, for us. So thank you for the patience today while we uh, work through the different things. I hope that it serves as some practice for the day. And um, the things that I wanted to mention is, well, you, you should have quite a few of the details for the day, but the link to the event, which is uh, now live on the Hoping platform is uh, on the slides. I will also be sharing the slides. Um, and if you have any questions uh, or suggestions, feel free to reach out to me or to Victoria, and we will be happy to help. So thank you so much again uh, to, for the time today. And I very much look forward to seeing you on the 22nd. I hope you have a nice rest of the day. Bye.